and we're back. So before I put the engine in, I wanted to make sure the hood is working properly. And for, I feel like most of you, cause I didn't know, the Crotto hood latching system is retarded. Um, I got a brand new kit that I'll put up a picture right here. Uh, I had no idea this was a thing, but when I got the car, it had no grill and there was this wire hanging down this one. This wire was like hanging down like that. And I was just like, what ghetto trash is this? And I know all you Corrado guys are laughing right now because you know what it's for. <laughs> so this system, they made it, I feel like way more complicated than need to be. But now I have all the new pieces in there and it is working like how it should. So, and now I see it moving how it should. But dude, if one thing breaks or one, my little thing over there like gets loose and the, the uh, cable, um, you know, doesn't hold, like your hood's stuck shut. This is crazy. So, so this is the end of the cable. This little piece right here is holding the cable. And I got that cranked down really hard this time. And if you see that little spring in there, that spring releases the hood right here. So that releases this side. And over here, this side works kind of the same way, but what pulls this spring to release the hood on this side is the cable itself pulling against this spring I don't know. I didn't understand it at all. I'm going to try to I'm going to try to pull it and videotape it at the same time so you guys can kind of see it too. Um, now that I see it working, I kind of see what they were what they were trying to do. Let's see if we can do this here. So So that I'm pulling it right now so that side goes in. So bam, that side's pretty much unlatched, should be <laughs> in theory, and then this side, see it pulls it so first it releases this side, dink, and then dink. It is a, I don't know, I guess it works. I heard a lot of problems, read a lot about it, um, but it's a really, really weird system. All right, I think it's about time. Um, I've got all the heat shielding back in. I've um, got the cables up out of the way where you want them. So when you put the engine in, they don't, you know, Cut them off so you can't get them back up. Got the axles in because I can't remember if it was just for a VR6 or for a 1.8T where you want the axles in so you can slide it up in there. I think it might be for the VR6 only. I'm not sure, but I have those in there. So if they, if I don't need that, I'll just put them down and then I'll put them back up when it's on there. So brake lines out of the way. Got the front cross member on and yeah, pretty pretty psyched to get the engine in here. I think I'm gonna do it tomorrow. Also put the downpipe on because this downpipe, it is pretty difficult to get these two bolts all the way tight. And this was just way easier. So I'm going to try to uh, get it in here, you know, slant it sideways and, and because it's just a pain to do it um, afterwards. So if I can't, then I'll just take it back out, take it off, no, no big deal. I mean, it's time-wise, if this does go on, it's going to save me a ton of time. But if it doesn't, it's not going to be that long. You know, it's not going to take me that long to take it back off. So also put the rear motor mount on and this awesome little heat shield that comes stock on the TDI ones. It's not for the bracket. It's for like the engine mount down here, you know. So I really like that. Yeah. So tomorrow, pretty pumped to put it in. So we got it in there. We have all the wires hooked up finally. I'm starting to put some of the intercooler piping on there, trying to map it out so I can get the, I got the, uh, I got the bung on for the boost sensor. Um, so I got to drill that out still, put that on, but everything's finally coming together. I'll put in this little video I just did a second ago right now. Yes. Oh my gosh, finally. After days, 
Like, I know I got a, a lot to go over. There's a, you guys, I've been <laughs> waiting, like, just to get this done. It's been a, a nightmare. <sighs> I just turned the key for the first time. Everything came on in the engine bay. All the, you know, electronics for the engine. And I just heard the fuel pump turn on. It has been a complete nightmare under here with spliced wires and things unplugged and things plugged in and not be, not being grounded um, good enough. Oh my gosh, this is a this has been a tough one. I mean, you, you have to figure out wiring, but this Crados take it to the next level. You know, I don't. I wish all this stuff wasn't electronic. Like, I wish the windows weren't electronic. Like, that's actually, you know what? I need to figure that out. Why these windows are still down right now? So I'm going to. That's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna see if I can get these windows up. So I got everything hooked up, and I I manually closed this today, and then after I hooked everything up, I uh, pushed the button, and it, it everything works. The automatic sunroof, it, nothing's broke on it. It shut just fine, and I'm like, whoa, that's awesome. Then same with the um, with the window over here, it shut perfectly fine. They just, someone just had the wires all mixed up and they, you know, nothing, they, they were just all messed up under there. I know it still w looks terrible. I'm just, I just put it up there just to get it out of my way. I still got to take it back down and rearrange a whole bunch of wires. But yeah, windows work perfectly. That was a big concern of mine that the what regulator or whatever the windows go out, if that was out or not. So really, really stoked on that. So. Um, I ordered a new fuel filter, but it hasn't come yet, so, and I don't want to wait anymore, so I have the gas line off, and I want to just see if any just gunk comes out of the fuel tank, because I think it was empty, so I want to see if anything comes out of there or of the fuel filter, so I'm going to turn it over a couple times, see if the gas is going to be uh, nasty. There we go. Now some. Now we got some. So I had some. I had some crap, some old brake fluid at the bottom. So that's not the fuel coming out. I should have got a new one. Okay, I, just, I found something clear. So now we can actually see what color the fuel's coming out like. That is a lot of fuel that came out. Oh my gosh, look at the color. Ooh, so, dang it man, I wish I had that new fuel filter. Jeez, that's like, that's old fuel. I thought that tank was empty. Dude, this is so nasty. I don't want that going through my new nice engine. <laughs> Dude, smelling this stuff, it smells so weird. So I want to supply the fuel pump with pure power so I can get all the bad gas out. And I've been putting off, um, taking the cover off and checking if it is a stock um, fuel pump or if it's a Corrado one. I don't know what came in the Corrado, but I looked at the part number and this is a Mark III uh, fuel pump already. So it's just like me putting a Mark III tank in any of the other builds that I've done. So this already has one, so that is good. Um, I found, found some wires that I need to rewrap back here. And then there's no clamp on this return line, which they're probably doesn't need to be, but I'm gonna put one on there anyway. So um, I'm gonna set up a wire to the battery, get all the bad fuel out, and then uh, hopefully we can get this thing started tonight. I'm I'm pretty excited. It's This one's taking me a little bit longer, feels like anyways. Okay, so I got the gas line back on, drained all the bad gas off, put a little bit of good gas in there, and I guess we're gonna see what happens. <laughs>
<sighs> Sweet. Took a little while um, for the gas to get up there. No leaks. No. No leaks. Yes. Super excited. I know you guys have been waiting for a video, so I'm gonna put this out hopefully tomorrow. Thanks for watching, guys. I'm so happy you got it. The first start was tonight, so yeah. I'll see you guys next video.